Thank you, Tabitha, for this opportunity um, to be able to just share with the ladies. And I just, I love your heart. I love your vision to empower women. So God bless you. Um, so as Tabitha said, my name is Joyce George. And uh, today I'm going to spend a few minutes just sharing with you what ministry looks like as a full-time mom. But before I get started with that, I um, just wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. So I am a native New Yorker, born and raised, and uh, my husband is Shabu, and we have had the privilege of being married for 18 glorious years, like we like to tell people. And God has blessed us with three beautiful children. We have Kayla, who's 15, Jonathan, who is 12, and Sophie, who's eight years old, and we like to go by George Party of Five. And um, when I was in New York, I felt very passionate about helping people, and so God led me into the profession of social work. It's been really exciting to hear from so many social workers today. Um, and we had our first child, and I began to feel as if God was calling me to a different season. So as passionate as I was about helping others and really viewing ministry as being able to preach and teach from the pulpit, I suddenly found myself in a different place where I felt as if God was calling me to be home and to really pour into my children. And so after praying and waiting for two years, God opened the door for us to be able to come out here to Texas. And so as a result, for the past 12 years, God has given me the privilege of being a stay-at-home mom. So when you hear those words, full-time mom, what kind of image gets conjured up in your mind? Now, I don't know about you girls, but for me, this is the kind of image that used to come up in my mind. You know, that perfect 1950s mom who's always prim and proper and perfect. And she has her happy husband smiling by her side. She's got her children who are happy. And look at her with her perfectly delicious moist chocolate cake. <laughs> and there's the reality of what it looks like for a stay-at-home mom. Someone who might be a little stressed, a little distracted, uh, someone who doesn't necessarily always feel super happy, and gosh, neither do her children. <laughs> so, that's exactly where I found myself. Here I am telling you girls that I had prayed and I wanted to be this full-time mom, and here I am now as a full-time mom in my house in Texas with now three children, and I have diapers, and I have bottles, and it seems like not everyone's really happy all the time, and my house certainly isn't perfect by any means, and I don't know if my husband always had that perfect smile on his face either. But in addition to that, my younger two children ended up being diagnosed with rare metabolic disorders, which led to years worth of hospitalizations, specialist visits, and attending to many special needs. And well, as if that wasn't enough, I thought, I'm really gonna embrace the South, and I'm gonna start homeschooling my children. So I started that when my oldest was five years old, and I found myself one day in my kitchen, just sobbing uncontrollably, because I thought, Lord, I thought you had a purpose for me. I thought you wanted me to use my voice to impact other people. But this is what my life has come down to? Oh, I guess you're done with me. And it was at that moment that the Holy Spirit was sweet enough to meet me in my brokenness and tell me, oh, but you're in a new season. And I do have ministry for you, but it looks a little different than what you imagined. You see, I've entrusted you with these precious lambs. Will you tend to their hearts? Will you shepherd them? And that is where I found myself now for the past 12 years, having the privilege and the honor 
of shepherding our three children's heart. And so today, what I wanted to do was just share with you these four aspects of what ministry looks like as a full-time mom. And I understand that we're all in different positions of our lives. Some of us are single, some of us are married, some of us have children, some of us don't, and some of us are empty nesters. But I just want to empower you with these few aspects of what it looks like so that perhaps it'll help you now, or maybe it'll help you in your future, or maybe it's something you can pass along to someone who you think would benefit. So one of the very first things that I have found to be most impactful as a full-time mom in ministry is to be able to pray. And I'm sure for anyone who hears that, you're thinking, well, you know, of course. I mean, isn't that what a mom does? She gets down on her hands and knees and she's, you know, crying out to Jesus for help for how to raise these children and for their education and their health and their future. Absolutely. But what I'm really focusing on is how to model prayer for your children. You see, something that I have found really important is to be able to help my children understand that when we pray, we're actually just having a conversation with our Heavenly Father. And that's something that we should be able to do at any time, any place, with anything that's on our hearts. And it's not enough to just share those things so that mommy and daddy can pray the eloquent prayers, but it's so that they themselves, with whatever words they have at the youngest age possible, can just start this conversation with God. So they have that confidence that they can talk to him about anything. And so what we have done in our home is before everyone pulls out their wish list and what, you know, has all their requests that they need to give to God, we always start with praise. We always start with, can you share one thing that you are thankful for? And once we have established this foundation of praise and gratitude, we then go into sharing what is it that we want to ask the Lord for, and then we will stand together in agreement and pray for those things. And so that is the very first thing that I have found to be most important in ministering as a full-time mom. The next thing, oh, my slide got cut off, I'm sorry about that. But the next part is to be able to teach from God's Word. So if you find yourself attending church, you're probably listen, you know, hearing me and thinking, okay, well, we go to a great church, we have a great pastor who gives a great sermon every Sunday, my kids are a part of a great Sunday school, they get all the God's word that they need. And that was something that I myself used to think, but I was wrong. Because what we hear on Sunday should actually just really seal the deal of what we have been reading and hearing from God all week long. And so what we like to do in our home is to be able to take out the Bible and to be able to read a passage together as a family. And once we've read it, we want to know, what did we just read? What, what is the Bible trying to tell us? And then finally, we want to ask ourselves, well, how can we even apply this in our own lives? So for example, a few months ago, my children and I, we were reading about Hannah in 1 Samuel, and the part that we specifically focused on was the fact that she was being teased by Penina because Hannah could not have children, whereas Penina could. And what we focused on was how Hannah responded to Penina, and the fact that she had a choice, and she could have very well retaliated, she could have spoken to her in anger, but that's not what we read in the Bible. And that really challenged my children because once they read that, they understood that about Hannah's character, and we had to get to that question of, well, how can you apply this in your own lives? They had to start thinking of instances where, you know, there aren't always going to be people who are going to be kind to them or say encouraging things to them, and they have a choice. How are they going to respond? Are they going to respond as Hannah did, or are they going to try to take matters into their own hands? which would then bring glory to God. Another aspect of being able to minister um, as a full-time mom, I think that this should work. 
is to be able to worship in my network. Okay, it's okay. Um, the next part is worship. So just like the last point that I made, again, if you're a part of a church, you're thinking, oh, we've had great worship at church. We have great worship leaders. They sing great songs. It's amazing to be at church. We get all the worship we need on Sundays. I used to think that way too. And then I had my children. And we ran into a lot of instances in our lives that weren't limited to, well, we'll wait till we get to church on Sunday to worship God through this. There we were in the middle of the week in the thick of maybe something that was joyful and maybe that was something sorrowful. But either way, we had to make that choice to be able to model worship for our children that, again, this is something you can do anytime, any place. Where do you find yourself? Give praise to God. And be able to worship through it so that if you're not finding yourself in the best place, by the time you're done worshiping, you have felt his presence and his peace, and you can leave it all in his hands. And so an example that I would share is that with um, my son having experienced many medical difficulties, including having had a stroke when he was five months old. We now find that he is struggling in the area of learning. And as I mentioned, we do homeschool. So there are instances where right smack in the middle of the day, you know, he really reaches a roadblock because he feels as if he is just struggling too much. This concept is too hard for him to be able to master. And he's done. He is angry because he knows he's not like everybody else. And he is angry. And we have had to make that decision that we're going to have to worship through those difficult moments. We will stop our school day. And we will put on worship music. And I will remind my son of who he is. And that he can overcome with God's help. And the truth is that when we start out with me trying to encourage him, he will shout back at me and say, no, I am not an overcomer. I cannot do anything. I am a failure. To which I will say, I'm sorry that you feel that way. The enemy is trying to blind you with lies, but you have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. And so we're going to worship our way until you feel like you can speak life over yourself. And through the tears, I still remember I played this song, uh, Victor's Crown by Darlene Chet. And it's all about overcome and how Jesus has won us the victory. And I still remember saying, I, I didn't overcome, I don't have victory. And we just continue to pray and worship until by the time that song was done, he looked at me with tears streaming down his cheeks and he said, I know God will help me. And I said, yes, son, God will help you. So that's another very important aspect of being able to minister as a mom. And finally, last but not least, I have found that in ministry as a full-time mom, it is really important to be able to pause for those teachable moments. Now as moms, as women, we're all busy. Let's just be real. If it isn't our jobs, and if it isn't school, if it isn't our household responsibilities or our responsibilities to our family, to our church, you name it, we're busy. We always have something going on. And in the midst of all that going on, have you ever noticed that life doesn't stop? The good, bad, and the ugly still happens. So what do you do? When, the, when those things come along, do you say, well, I just don't have time to deal with that right now. Maybe tonight we'll squeeze it in at 9.30 and we'll try to you know, talk about this tough moment. Well, what I have found is that there will always be dirty dishes. There will always be laundry to fold. But I will only have my children's hearts to shepherd for a very brief period of time. So all of that can wait while I decide to make a teachable moment from this present circumstance that we're encountering. So just a few weeks ago, there we were in the middle of school. I got a lot of things to do. I've got tests to give, lessons to teach. As soon as we're done, I've got things to do for church, things to do around the house. I, I have a, my calendar's full, my list. I need to check things off. And then I received a text message from 
a family member. We've been praying for a relative for the past eight months who has been hospitalized and really struggling. And we have been praying as a family for a miracle for this relative. And we found ourselves hearing that and we were praying for a Christmas miracle for this relative to be able to finally go home from the hospital by Christmas. And that's what my children have been praying for. Well, that day, in the middle of everything that was happening, my relative reached out to me and said, you know, that the child has been facing numerous complications and it looks like going home is going to be delayed. Well, I decided to go ahead and share that with my children and they were all disheartened immediately because they've been praying and they've been believing for eight months for healing, for this child to go home. They've been believing Christmas is going to be the day of this miracle for this family. And for them to hear that it's not going to happen, everyone's heart sunk a little bit. And the question said, but why? Why can't God answer our prayer that they can go home? That's a big doozy. And I got a lot of things to do. Maybe we can wait for family devotions at 9.30 to talk about this. <laughs> but I knew I had to stop. And I had to tell them, you know what? God does hear your prayers, but his timing does look a little different than ours, doesn't it? That's tough to hear as a kid. I don't want to hear it as an adult. So to be able to explain that to my children, that, you know, if our relative were to go home too soon and they might face some complications, so it's better that they just stay, get the treatment that they need, and when they go home, they're going to go home, and they're never going to go back to that hospital again. And that's what we're going to believe God for. So they all heard me. No one really said anything. A few hours passed. We sat down for lunch. And my youngest said, I I'd like to pray for the meal. She went ahead and she prayed for the meal. And then she said, it, uh, when she's done praying for the meal, she didn't stop. She continued to say, Lord, we continue to believe that our little relative will go home by Christmas. But if she doesn't, we know you will send her home at the right time. Mm -hmm. So friends, ministry isn't limited to the pulpit or a title. Ministry is about wherever you are, with whomever you've been entrusted to, as my children have been entrusted to me, that all this mom's heart desires is that my children would love the Lord love the word, and love his people. God bless you all.